Good afternoon, everybody. It's Simon here from careermap.co.uk, and welcome to today's live webinar. Uh, we're joined by the guys from QA, uh, and they're going to be talking about how to get into a tech and digital career via one of their apprenticeship schemes. Great to see so many people here today for Scottish Apprenticeship Week. Uh, but before we begin, if you look to the right of the presentation screen, you'll see a chat box. We are live, so ask any questions uh, any time throughout the presentation in there. Uh, and what we'll do, we'll run through as many questions as we can at the end during the Q&A session. Uh, before we begin, I'll just pass you over to the QA team to introduce themselves and give us a bit of a background of their role at QA. Thanks, Simon. Hi, everybody. I hope you're all well. Uh, thanks very much for joining this afternoon. Uh, my name is Martin, and I am the Client Relationship Manager at QA Apprenticeships. Um, and I'm also joined by my colleague, Kristen, um, who works within our marketing team um, down in England as well. Um, she'll be keeping me right with any questions you have um, later on in the session, and I'll be more than happy to answer as many of those as possible. All right. Um, I'm going to start by um, just really getting into a bit of detail about um, who QA are um, and um, what we do. So we are Scotland's leading provider for digital and IT apprenticeships. Um, over the last 10 years, um, we've started roughly, probably well over now actually, if I'm being honest, 30,000 careers through our digital and IT apprenticeships. Um, we're included in the top 50 training providers top 50 training providers from 2019 to 2020 and also in 2020 to 2021. Um, we're really successful uh, and very good at what we do um, and 90% of QA apprentices went straight into full-time jobs after completing their apprenticeships. 70% of our apprentices feel more confident and better prepared for work life than most people their age. And an apprenticeship is not just about getting the qualification you know, it's about making sure that you're developing as an individual and also hopefully on the right um, career path as well as um, your kind of personal life. So hopefully we can improve your confidence as well as potentially um, financially supporting yourself as well. Um, we were the training provider for um, the UK's first female cyber, cyber security apprenticeship achiever um, and that was uh, Stephanie. And we also had the first ever um, cyber security apprenticeship achiever with a distinction um, and, and that was a, a chap called Ben. So what we do um, is not only relevant but we do it at such a high standard that people are coming out with great ga uh, great grades, <laughs> hard to say, um, as well as going on to achieve further things in their career. As I mentioned we specialise in tech and digital so we offer apprenticeships that focus on the most in-demand tech and digital skills from SCQF level six, six, which is the equivalent of first year of university to SCQF level eight, which is the equivalent of second year of university. The digital revolution is impacting all sectors across Scotland as increasing types of businesses are harnessing the benefits of technology to drive innovation. You know, if you take your local Tesco, you'll see much more um, devices where you can actually scan all your items and pay for it without speaking to an individual. You know, those devices have to be serviced. There has to be people looking after them to make sure they're working all the time. Um, and if there's any issues, then it's normally somebody from an IT perspective or digital perspective that's fixing those machines. Um, as you'll be aware, there's a huge amount of vacancies um, across the UK at the moment. Um, and around 13% um, are IT related. So in Edinburgh and Glasgow, tech jobs make up an even higher proportion of those roles. So they're up about 30 and 28% respectively, as companies are now looking for talented staff to find, um, to help them expand and grow. So organisations are finding it very difficult to keep staff and um, retain staff because people are moving into other roles, maybe moving for more money or for more flexibility in their jobs. So what they're looking at is, is younger talent to be there um, to support them um, in growing as an organisation and also to close the, the skills shortage and skills gap, which, which is very evident throughout Scotland. Uh, and even better news on that is that there's not one type of tech person. It's increasingly diverse, vibrant and an in-demand sector entered by people whom you might not expect to, people like yourselves. What is an apprenticeship and how does it work? So 
people ordinarily um, associate an apprenticeship with those working um, in joinery roles, um, maybe construction, gas engineers, electrician, um, but apprenticeships have, have absolutely diversed in the last kind of 10 to 12 years or so now, um, and it's very much uh, an area which people are looking at to go and further their careers because they don't feel like college or university is the right route for them. They might prefer to be going out, earning money, and obviously working towards a qualification. So an apprenticeship is a modern hands-on way to train for an exciting new career in tech. So tech, you know, that's just going to be using things like Microsoft Office, Office which you do day to day, all the way through to particular technology, such as cloud technology, AWS or Amazon Web Services, and then everything in between that as well. It's a paid full-time job, so you work with an employer, you have a line manager or a, men or a mentor, you take home a salary at the end of that, um, the month and have access to employee benefits such as annual leave, a pension scheme, and your apprenticeship will be a mix of classroom training as well as on-the-job training. One of the most important bits of that is you'll also have a structured training programme with QA, and that will either be virtually or face-to-face -face during your working week. So you'll learn and develop your skills and earn an industry-recognised qualification at the end of your apprenticeship. So within QA, you'll have somebody that will do reviews with you regularly, usually every 10 weeks. Um, and every five weeks in between, there'll be a check-in call as well, making sure you're getting on OK, you're, you're not struggling with the work, or if you need any additional support, what it is you need support with so that we can help you with that as well. How does an apprenticeship differ from university? University is not for everybody. Um, I'm speaking from experience, so I've got an honours degree um, in sports coaching and I'm not doing anything relating to sports in my current job. That's because there wasn't too many jobs out there um, when I graduated, probably around about 10 years or so now ago. Um, People might not like the, the idea of university, so they might think, do you know what, I don't want to go and sit in lecture halls for three, four hours at a time to then go and do the work in one time. It might be difficult to balance a part-time job and university if you need to make money in terms of your personal circumstances. Um, and you might just feel like it's not the right way for you to learn. Maybe you prefer to learn hands-on. So the difference between um, university is you'll be earning a salary from the get-go. So the very first day, you'll start earning money. Uh, you'll get to spend time learning and working. So it's not like you'll finish work at half past five on a Friday and then you need to go home and do some coursework for your apprenticeship. You'll probably spend two to three hours a week um, on your apprenticeship work during your um, your working hours, so between nine to half five. And that will maybe be, you know, three hours on a Monday because it's a bit of a quieter day for the employer. Or you may find that it's split over kind of half an hour each day, depending on the, the needs of the business as well. And the important thing is you'll get to implement the skills you learn in the job. So I would have learned, um, you know, quite a lot in university, but it's not something that I can directly um, relate to my current job. So you might think, you know what, if I go and do X degree, maybe it's uh, something like sociology or psychology, but you don't feel like there's going to be a job at the end of it, then, you know, why go and do it when you could potentially learn skills through an apprenticeship that you can actually then replicate in the job and do the job to a better standard or make changes so that the business is benefiting from it too. I'll now go into a bit of detail on the different programmes which QA offer. So this is the programmes we offer at SCQF Level 6. Um, so we have digital application support. So that's just about using different software um, that a laptop has or a PC has. So, you know, if you think of the basics, so you've got Microsoft Outlook for emails, you've got Microsoft Word, or you'll maybe write up some um, some forms or some templates for something. Um, Excel, where you might use for some finance um, side of things. Um, you'll potentially use database for a database of clients for an organization. And then you might use some different software which an organization uses and it's specific to them. So for example, um, if we look at QA, we use a system called Karma um, and that's where we log all of our information on our clients and our candidates. So it's about you using these systems um, and trying to understand how to use them collaboratively to then be able to go and do your job. In terms of future job prospects, you could be looking at maybe going into a bit more of a, a technical system support role 
or you could even maybe look at more of a, a digital version of administration as well. Lots of organisations we're working with at the moment are using that to bring in kind of junior office staff because of the different systems that they're all using. So as I mentioned, the basics, Outlook and Word and Excel, but also any systems that they would use that are specific to them. Um, the IT professional programme, that's very much an IT role. And when I mean IT, I don't mean, don't mean admin in IT, it's very much computing or computing science, which you'll know. Um, so that's where you're going to be gaining the skills to be um, in demand for tech jobs. This is where we need people to fill these positions because these are where we're getting most of the, the positions that come up. Um, so you're going to be working with the most popular digital technologies. So you may be really, really good at fixing a PC or building a PC and maybe um, taking it apart, putting it back together again. You may be the go-to person when the Wi-Fi goes down in the house or your mum or dad or guardian have forgotten the password, so you need to go and reset it for them. Um, and you'll just be very kind of hands-on and inquisitive around IT. You know, how does it work? Why does it work? Um, and that's really where you want to see yourself in a career in 5, 10, 15 years' time. Future job prospects. So first or second line help desk support and technical support analysts. So they're quite similar um, job roles. Effectively, what you could be doing is working for an organisation and being the go-to person. So if, for example, I come in on a Monday morning and I've forgotten my password on my PC, I'll phone our IT team and it'll probably be one of the apprentices that answers. Um, and I'll say, uh, hi, look, can you reset my password, please? I've forgotten it. And he'll log on to my computer remotely, reset my password, and then that's me on my way again. What that will teach you is the kind of fundamentals of IT and the common problems that come through from that as well. And then you'll progress on to, to maybe things that are a bit more um, tricky, maybe hands-on roles in terms of, you know, setting up classrooms for training sessions that come up, and um, potentially looking at maybe... At, a new laptop that's coming out and you have to roll it out to all the staff so you need to make sure software's up to date and it's all got the right um, equipment on it that type of thing so it's very much going to be learning the basics of it uh, software and web development is another area which is is becoming hugely um in need of um junior kind of talent so this is going to be where you learn to build and test software applications on the web mobile or desktop using coding language so you, if you're into software and web development, you'll know what we mean when you're speaking about languages. So it's not French, Spanish, and Italian. Um, it's very much using things like Python, um, C Sharp, CSS, HTML, WordPress, and these are the different languages and different kind of keywords that you'll know if you've got an interest in software and web development. In terms of future job prospects, you'll be looking at a junior um, application developer junior programmer or even junior software developer role. There's lots of different areas of software and web development. It's an area that's ever changing and continually growing. You know, there's different languages that come out regularly. Um, you might have heard of kind of full stack developers. You might have seen them online when you're looking for roles. Um, you might have seen JavaScript developers and they're looking for Java engineers. You know, so there's lots of different roles within that area. And it's about, our job is about getting companies to look at how we can bring junior talent into the organisation. And it's your job to learn the skills and how to do these jobs as well. So another area which is, is hugely in demand. Digital marketing um, is learning how to harness your creative skills to influence customers' behaviour. So it sounds very salesy. Um, but digital marketing um, is such a huge area for a lot of organisations now. So um, as you'll all be aware, the big thing at the moment and has been over the last couple of years is TikTok. So everybody's been on TikTok, everybody's seen the, the, the videos that's been posted online um, and that is now a huge area for organisations to target um, because that's where everybody is. So it's a huge audience for them to promote their, their products or their services. So you could potentially be working for an organisation where they want you to, to monitor all the social media sites. So that'll be things like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, maybe um, diverting into TikTok as well, possibly LinkedIn, which is a, a kind of um, a business site for those looking for new jobs or want to promote their services. So how to use that. Um, you potentially 
be in charge of the website. So making sure that's kept up to date with prices and things like that. You know, if you think of a, a shop like, I don't know, maybe Topshop, for example, or Primark or H&M, you know, it's important that their prices are always up to date. So maybe you're in charge of making sure that everything's kept um, in date and it's all it's all correct so that the business doesn't lose any money. So you may well be in charge of how a website looks, how it's presented and all that kind of stuff. Um, job prospects, you'll be looking at a digital marketing technologist, which could be a digital marketeer, um, social media executive. So as I mentioned, focusing on social media elements of marketing, um, content coordinator. So very much looking at maybe doing blog writing or creating flyers, um, potentially doing um, different things to, to attract attention to a company's website or to um, their, any services that they, they may offer. Um, data analytics is slightly different, so that's a, a, an area which is growing, um, but we need more organisations to be bought into that as well. So that's really about learning how to collect, organise and study raw data and then translate it into something where there's trends and, and obviously areas where there's a common theme. So probably the best or the most current way to look at it is, is the coronavirus. So obviously there would have been a huge amount of data um, relating to coronavirus in terms of areas where there was spikes. So if there was a particular spike in North Lanarkshire or Aberdeenshire or maybe down, down in England, you know, that information has to be all collated and then maybe establish where those people were or if it's in that particular area through um, maybe family or friends visiting each other. That in itself is data. So that's raw data. And what then it's your job to do is then understand that data and find out where the trends are and then pass that information on so that things can be done with it. Um, the NHS um, hire apprentices to do um, to do things like that. Um, they might not have been involved in the coronavirus information and um, data, but they hired them probably about three years ago now, so prior to coronavirus starting, um, and have them working within the organisation to look for trends um, and what's happening within the NHS so they can improve. Um, different areas you can go into there moving forward, so you can maybe look at becoming a security engineer or an, an operations analyst, so as I mentioned it's about analysing the data and establishing where the trends are, IT operator because it's very much going to be using a lot of IT systems or potentially a security analyst too. So the next level we deliver programmes on is SCQF level 8. Um, so this is the level above, as I mentioned, that's the equivalent of second year of university. Um, DevOps is learning how to accelerate and simplify development cycles by combine, combining the practices of software development and technical operations. So there's a lot of, a lot of big words there and it sounds quite, um, quite fancy and, and a lot to it. It's effectively where you have people who are maybe doing help desk roles. So for example, the, the IT program, which I mentioned first, so the, the um, IT professional here, and then those that are working within software and web development roles. And it's really about combining those two roles and working out where the pain points are and, and then where we can go and um, make things better. Um, this is something that which is, is quite new um, to IT apprenticeships, and it's something that we're, we're starting to roll out to different organisations. It's particularly important in bigger organisations as well because they have DevOps engineers, um, if you're money orientated, if you have a look at DevOps engineer salaries online, um, it can be quite lucrative. So definitely something to keep an eye on. Um, future job prospects, an automation engineer, a platform engineer, or an infrastructure engineer, but also around the software side of things as well. As I mentioned, data analytics, we've kind of covered that already. IT professionals have also done that. But what we'd expect from you in this level is um, working to a higher standard. So the level of what you'll be required will, will need to improve and your job role will change as well. So we wouldn't just put you onto level eight um, if your job's not changing. We very much need to see you doing additional work or working towards um, different projects or, or different goals. Um, Cyber security, um, that's a huge area of importance at the moment. You may have seen, obviously, with the, the war that's uh, it's happening over in uh, Ukraine at the moment, um, and our, an organisation called Anonymous hacking into to kind of Russian sites and things like that to, to present the information from the West. And that's a, that's cyber security in itself. You know, they've been able to um, 
hack into to Russian sites and things and um, project information onto there which they didn't plan for. Um, and that's what cyber security is. It's about making sure that the company you're working for is safe from these these attacks. So you'll learn how to apply the knowledge of cyber security to protect organizations, systems, um, information, personal data, and people from attacks and unauthorized access. So even if you look at things as as um you know kind of important as data, so our data, so your data as individuals, you know, like your your date of birth, your home address, all that information needs to be protected, whichever organization holds it. So it's important that cyber security continues to be at the forefront of that. Job prospects, you know, you'd be looking at cyber security consultant, cyber security analyst, potential risk analyst, you know, where are the issues, where are the pain points, or an intelligence researcher as well. Software med development covered already at level six, but again, we'd just be expecting you to um, be doing that at a higher level. We work with hundreds, probably thousands of employers um, from startups, so small businesses that maybe only have three or four people in it, excuse me, um, to medium sized enterprises. So, you know, organizations that are a bit bigger, maybe have, I don't know, maybe 50 to 100 employees, 50 to 150 employees. And then to the huge organizations that you can see there. So NatWest, Amazon, Scottish Power, Scottish Government, um, Hart McLeod, as well as Cisco. Um, so I would imagine you'll recognize probably at least four or five of those organizations there. Um, Hart McLeod are um, a, a law firm, a legal firm um, based in Glasgow and Edinburgh, um, as well as Inverness. And they take on lots of apprentices from us. And it's been hugely successful for them. With all the programmes, you've got the chance to earn additional qualifications along the way, um, which is then in turn going to help you to grow your skills. So you'll have access to our Cloud Academy. So Cloud Academy is an organisation which we bought a couple of years ago. And in the summer of last year, we included it within our apprenticeship programmes. So it's a virtual portal of up to date courses and content you can use to build your knowledge and embed what you learn. Uh, you can earn extra qualifications from prestigious IT vendors such as Amazon Web Services, Azure and more. The learning model is a blend of virtual and face-to-face -face learning sessions. Uh, you'll gain knowledge through a combination of project and lab work, events, self-research, self-paced learning and peer-to-peer -peer learning. So it's not going to be you sitting in a room just looking at a laptop all day. We're going to look at it across all the different variations of how you can learn. You'll be supported from the beginning of your apprenticeship right the way through until the end. Um, recruiters work with you to prepare you for interviews or assessments. And you'll also have the support of your safeguarding and learner services team for any day-to-day -day queries or wellbeing concerns you may have. And that's something that's hugely important to QA. As I mentioned right at the start, we don't want to just see you develop your um, qualifications. We want you to develop as, as human beings. Um, and sometimes life can be tough. Um, and things happen outside the workplace that you might need someone to, sp to speak to. And QA have that through our safeguarding and learner services team. They're there to support you if you know, you've got financial struggles, problems at home, um, you're maybe struggling with your mental health, and it's something that you want to speak to somebody about or you want more support about. And QA are there to help you with that. So if there is any issues, if you do become a, a QA apprentice, then please make us aware of those and we'll do our best to support you with that. So the basics, how do I get into a QA apprenticeship? Um, there's not too much we ask. Um, you need to be age 16 or more with a valid passport, birth certificate and a national insurance number. Um, you must have lived in the UK and or the WEA for three years prior to your apprenticeship start. Uh, you must be a resident in Scotland and not undertaking any apprenticeship or government funded qualification at the same time. So for a modern apprenticeship, you can't be still in school. Um, I know you've got foundation apprenticeships, but it's slightly different. Um, obviously, you'll be um, uh, in the actual workplace itself, so you can't be in school at the same time. Um, the qualifications, you know, we don't have too many entry requirements for that. We very much want to see um, passion and desire for whichever area of IT you want to get into and whichever area of digital you'd like to get into. Um, and we'll pretty much based on a case by case basis. So it's your job to impress us so that then we can say to, to any clients, you know, this this individual's a really good candidate. Um, I think you should consider them for one of the roles that you're you're recruiting for. All right. 
So your apprenticeship journey. So if after today you think, yeah, this is something I really want to do, um, you can apply for one of our apprenticeship vacancies. Um, we probably add hundreds um, across Scotland every month. Um, and then you can narrow down your search for your location or by keywords. So if you want to work within a five mile radius of your house, 10 mile radius, you can do that. And you can filter by particular program as well. So if you're looking at IT, um, if you're looking at digital marketing or kind of more office based roles, you can filter by that. You'll fill in your details and upload a copy of your CV. You know, your CV is really important because it's your opportunity to sell yourself. You know, I don't know you and the engagement team who deal with your CV initially don't know you. So it's important that um, we make sure that you really sell yourself and what you're good at and what your, where your strengths lie and why you want a career within um, the IT sector and digital sector. Um, one of our career specialists will review your application and give you a call if you're a good match. And then after completing the document and ID check, you'll create a personal profile, which is an opportunity to tell employers about yourself. We'll support you all the way with this. So we'll set up any interviews for you or any assessments and help you to prepare for them as well. Um, we'll keep in touch about the app app apprenticeship job you applied for. And if any others come up, then we'll obviously let you know as well. So it's always good to have a couple of options open to you. So you might be interviewing for one role because it was the one that, that stood out to you most. But we might think after speaking to you, actually, they'd be really good for that position. And we might speak to you about that as well. If all goes well, you get the job and then you'll start your apprenticeship. We've got a couple of um, tech trailblazers, if you like. So this is Stephanie and Jonathan. So Stephanie um, was the first woman in the UK to complete a cybersecurity apprenticeship. And she's now working towards extending her skills within the cyber industry. Um, quite simply, she chose to do the cybersecurity apprenticeship because it offered a mix of the theory and practical knowledge. Um, and then we have Jonathan, who was based in the um, Edinburgh, and he worked for an organisation called Wallet Services. So he was able to build the skills on the job and learn from the skills coaches at QA. Um, he was then pro promoted to the marketing manager, um, and then through his apprenticeship, he's begun a career that he's really proud of, and, and he's still doing very well. Um, so some real positive stories from an apprenticeship that you can go and create your own career, own pathway on it. Um, this um, next piece uh, is a video from one of our apprentices at the University of St Andrews. Um, so St Andrews University have been taking apprentices on for myself for around about 10, 12 years now, um, and it's been hugely successful. Um, we've got apprentices across many different departments, um, and it's been hugely um, important to the continual development of the university and their responsibilities in terms of investing in the youth of today. So I'm just going to play this video, bear with me a wee second. Sorry, let me... Uh, Our idea in 2012 was to create an internal pipeline of IT resources as well as providing opportunities for young people from the local area to learn from highly experienced, long-serving members of the IT department. At the time, we also recognised that there was a skills shortage of IT professionals in Scotland. Traditionally, we'd always recruited graduates, so employing IT apprentices was a risk. However, our concerns never materialised and the impact has been significant bringing a culture change to the IT department, as well as increased customer satisfaction levels. I applied to be an apprentice because the apprenticeship route offered me an opportunity to gain viable work experience in a professional working environment that I wouldn't have gained otherwise. I chose an IT apprenticeship because I think it's a great way of getting on-the-job experience for an industry that you might be working in in the future. I chose the apprenticeship route to progress my skills and put them into practice in a learning workplace. Each IT apprentice is offered a two-year contract with extensive training and development opportunities. At the end of their contract, our IT apprentices have assembled enviable CVs, making them very employable as they take the next step on the career ladder. My IT apprenticeship at the University of St Andrews has been a wonderful experience. Great working with such a well-renowned IT service team, and it's brilliant meeting people from all around the globe. 
The opportunities the apprenticeship scheme has given me is I was able to, to build the skill set suitable to go into a, a full-time job as a service desk analyst. Well, it's been great. I've learned quite a lot. Everybody's here has been really friendly and helpful to me, and I feel like I can really further my career by working here. The introduction of additional staff in the teams has enabled us to provide a much more efficient service, and we've seen our customer satisfaction results get higher year on year. Our call resolution rates for incidents and service requests have also improved, meaning our customers are receiving a better service. I would most definitely recommend an IT apprenticeship to young people looking to start their careers in IT. Well, I would recommend it. It's been a great opportunity for me. It's been a great experience working here. And if you really want to further your career, I would recommend doing an apprenticeship. So I would definitely recommend the apprenticeship programme to any potential school leaver. It's definitely the best option. You're making money, you're learning stuff on the job. Yeah, definitely the best option to go for. As our IT apprentices move into year two of their contract, we discuss the next steps of their career and provide them with support as they start applying for jobs. Our IT apprentices also go out to local schools to talk about their experience and to encourage the pupils to be the next generation of IT professionals. We're really proud of our IT apprentices and of the programme we run here at the University. It's given young people a real kickstart to a great career in IT. Okay, so um, it's not just me saying apprenticeships um, are good. Um, obviously, that's um, hearing it from people that are, are directly um, doing the, the, the actual qualification themselves. Um, I'm just going to go back onto the final couple of slides um, for myself. I need to uh, just go there and there we go. So, um, if you are ready to apply for an apprenticeship, you can have a look at our apprenticeship vacancies through that link or you can scan the QR code on the right hand side and that will take you there as well. All right. Additionally, um, if you're still in full time education and you're not ready um, to start your application yet, you can fill in the, the form on the left hand side and we'll keep in touch with you until you're ready. Um, or again, you can simply scan the, the QR code there too. If you're still at school or under 16 and want to get started on an apprenticeship, here are a few things you can do to prepare. So take on some courses, show your future employer you're proactive and ready to learn. So you've got things like Google's Digital Garage, Udemy, Skillshare, General Assembly and others provide free and paid courses. Work on your CV, you know, start getting your CV ready as you'll need one when you're going to apply for your apprenticeship. Maybe even look at doing some work experience as well. So you could undertake um, some voluntary work at um, a local charity shop or do some work experience at a tech firm because then you'll be developing um, useful skills like communication, teamwork, which is going to be great for your CV too. Okay, dokie. Um, that's me um, finished the presentation. Thanks very much for everybody who's listened. I'll now take some questions um, and hopefully be able to answer those for you as well. Thanks, Brian. Really great presentation. Um, unfortunately, my internet just went, so I can't see any of the questions. It kicked me out of the room, <laughs> and they just all disappeared. So, um, can, are they, do you still can you see them in the chat box at all? Yep, I can see. Yeah, I can see questions. Kristen, are you still on the call as well? <laughs> Not sure if Chris is still on. Yeah, there's there's maybe 10, 15 questions and I'll I'll can answer <laughs> those as best I can. So Sorry about um, this. that was a really bad time. No, it? that's okay. <laughs> um so James has asked, um, can you pick the uni you want to do the apprenticeship at? So um that's a good question. Um, James, the it actually comes from the employers. So the employers tell us when they're looking to take on an apprentice. So um, you know, we work with different um, universities across Scotland, so it very much determines when they're looking to take on apprentices and, and which organisation is doing that. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, Sanya, you've asked, can I apply with a different employer if I am unsuccessful? Yes, you can. Um, if you go to the interview stage with an employer, but you were just picked at the post, somebody else had a bit more experience or maybe just fitted that, that particular team they were going into, we would absolutely be happy to put you forward for different roles within QA. So no problem there. Uh, Holly, another great question. So how do QA access if you're a good match? Would you suggest a different role if it suits better? 
yeah, we would. So if you apply to us, um, Holly, and you think that I would really like to do digital marketing, but you come in and you talk about a lot of IT on your um, CV, or you've done a lot of kind of IT work in your spare time, voluntary work, then we might suggest that you go down that route. However, it is your career, so we very much want to leave that kind of final decision with yourself, but we'll give you a steer where possible. Um, Sam, what do, Q, what do QA look for on a CV? What helps an applicate, applicant stand out? Yeah, Sam, that's a, that's a really important question. Um, what employers are looking for is something a bit different. And that doesn't sound like a good answer, Sam. But what I mean by that is if you've somebody who's um, maybe been building websites in their spare time um, or has been blogging in their spare time and they've got evidence of some something that's related to that job that they're applying for, that would make you stand out as an apprentice. Most people will just have a, CV, a standard CV and then apply to five or six different jobs and not change it. Whereas if you can tailor your CV to that specific job, that will help out um, your application. So a great question there. Uh, Rich, can you choose the employer you want to work for? I would love to work for BEE. Do you work with them? Um, so yeah, just as I touched on um, with James earlier, um, you can choose the employer you work for. We wouldn't just, you know, put you forward for any role and say you're going there. Um, it's your decision, it's your career. Um, but that will determine um, the employers we work with determine when they're recruiting. So um, if BE are looking for apprentices, then we would absolutely um, consider you for those positions if it was something you're keen on. And if they had any minimum criteria and you met that, then we could absolutely put you forward for those roles. Uh, Paul, Paul Johns, um, any tips on interviews and what's involved in an assessment? So interviews vary by the employer. So it really depends. Some employers will just want to bring you in for a 15, 20 minute chat just to, just to know about you as an individual. Others might have you doing presentations. Um, others might have um, maybe some written work for you to do. Um, so it very much depends on what type of um, employer you're going for. Paige, do you have to pay to do the extra qualifications? No. So um, that's a good one in terms of how apprenticeships are paid for. Um, because it's education, it's funded by the Scottish Government and the money comes from Skills Development Scotland. Tanya, um, is there a max age to apply? Is I want to change my career as <laughs> I hate it. Um, sorry to hear that, Tanya. But um, there is the funding aspect works for um, different age categories. So it's fully funded for 16 to 19 year olds and then partially funded for 20 to 24 year olds. If you are um, have barriers to work or you were in care when you are younger, that funding is, extends up to the age of 29. Um, Darren, where can I view the content that's covered on each apprenticeship? Darren, that's all on our website, so have a look on there and you'll be able to see that. Tyler, do you have exams or coursework on an apprenticeship? Again, you, you'll see that um, online. There's no specific exam as such, but the coursework you'll do will very much depend on the apprenticeship you're doing. Um, Chris, how much do you get paid on an apprenticeship? That varies, so that depends on the organisation you're working for. Some organisations, maybe the smaller, smaller ones, maybe only pay around about the minimum, which is four pounds eighty per hour. And then other organisations will pay more than that. Um, it really just depends on the, the organisation itself. Um, Anton J, we don't offer degree apprenticeships at the moment. That's something um, which I believe is only done in England. You may be referring to graduate apprenticeships, which is done by universities. So if it was a degree apprenticeship, graduate apprenticeship you were looking at, you would need to, to speak to them. Um, Josie, how do a degree apprenticeships work? How do you work and go to uni at the same time? Um, because we don't deliver those, Josie, I'm not 100% sure, but from what I do know, I believe you do four days a week in work and one day a week at university. Um, Johnny, do you train people to be able to work as a data scientist? Um, yeah, it's probably a bit further down the line, if I'm being honest, Johnny. You know, we're very much about starting your career within data. So as you'll have seen, you know, data analytics and data analysts is, is what you potentially start doing. You could go on and do further qualifications around data um, to become a data scientist. Um, so it will get you on the path, but you need to obviously do the rest of it. Harriet, do I need to travel to QA or is it online? Yeah, it's all online. Um, we have training centres in Glasgow, Edinburgh and Aberdeen. Obviously, with everything going on, um, we do everything virtually at the moment. Um, Sally-Ann, do we have any rules on the Isle of Skye? Um, no, we don't. 
Sally Ann, unfortunately. However, if you approach an organisation um, and they're looking to take you on in an area which we can deliver apprenticeships in, you could then um, work for that organisation and contact QA and then we could put you onto the programme itself. All right. Ryan, is it difficult to balance working and studying? How do most apprentices balance this? Yeah, that's a great question, Ryan. As I mentioned earlier, um, you'll be doing your apprenticeship work during your working week. So it's very much about time management and spending that time between nine and half five or nine and six, whatever your hours are, and doing that apprenticeship work. We're only asking for around two to three hours a week, so it's not too much. So you should be able to manage that. However, the assessor will give you um, support on that and how best to manage it. Um, Ollie, what will be asked in a QA review? It'll be really just to get feedback from you. Um, you know, they'll look at the work that you've been um, that you've submitted uh, and look at areas where you could improve or areas where you've done particularly well, um, and then it'll go from there. Holly, how will the apprenticeship be split between classroom and on-the-job training? So the apprenticeship itself, that'll, that'll vary. So some of the programmes will have up to eight weeks of classroom training. Other programmes will only have two weeks of classroom training. So it very much depends. But because we're a private organisation, we're not like college or university where you have set intakes of September and January. And we run our classroom training all year round. Um, Libs, would I be working with other people uh, my own age, like at college? Yeah, most people will be between the ages of 16 to 19, which is where our funding um, kind of demographic is. You may be in class sometimes with people a bit older, but not too often. Um, Chloe, what employers could I work for? Um, lots of different ones. Um, the biggest ones we work with are um, Amazon, Cisco. Um, we work with a number of the NHSs as well. Um, I'm trying to think all the way down to kind of smaller organisations like um, Harp McLeod um, or small IT firms as well. So lots of different ones. Uh, Maya or Mia, um, is digital the best thing to go into? Uh, how many roles will increase by in the future? Um, that's a great question. Um, I'm not sure, to be honest. Um, I think it's very difficult to say. There is a digital um, and IT skills shortage in the in Scotland and the UK at the moment. Um, so I, I imagine the roles will, will continue to increase, um, but I don't know how by how much. Holly, um, final question from yourself. Uh, do you need relevant work experience to apply? No, you don't, in, in a short answer. Um, if you're not able to do any work experience or anything, then, then that's okay. What we, would, what we would look for is for you to show an aptitude and a passion for getting into whichever sector you're looking to, to get into. All right. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think there's any other questions. I think I've picked them all up there. Um, so, so, yeah, Simon, yeah. I'll pass back to yourself. Yeah, uh, basically, excellent, very knowledgeable, informative session. Hope everybody enjoyed it. I'd just like to say thanks for everybody coming today. Uh, we've re we are recording this session, so it will be available to watch on the Career Map Live tab of uh, careermap.co.uk anytime. So if you want to come back and reference anything, feel free. Um, have you got any sort of parting words you want to leave, Martin, with the audience today before we sign off? Um, I think what I'd like to say is um, I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope it's been informative. Um, I think apprenticeships still um, have a bit to go in terms of people being fully aware of, of the opportunities that they actually can offer you know everybody will be told in school about university and, and what you can go and do in degrees and all that kind of stuff um but university is not for everybody and um, if i could go back 10 15 years i would have loved to have gone down an it apprenticeship when i can when i see the opportunities that now exist and um, so if you think oh, do you know what uni is not for me um i don't want to disappoint maybe parents or family that are pushing you to go to uni you know an apprenticeship is is a fantastic way to, to learn you know i've seen that from some of the, the the guys at st andrews university and that's not a one-off we could have gone to a number of organizations that we work with um, and they would have got a similar message to to the guys at st andrews so if you're thinking it you're thinking digital you know an apprenticeship hands-on learning is a, a really good way to go brilliant thanks mike thanks for joining us today um, thank you very and much for the chance yeah, no problem. And uh, yeah, take care, everybody. We'll uh, see you on the next webinar. Take care.